Welcome to the Tool Hut channel. Today we have a 2010 Infinity G37. We're going to do an ECM update on it. What do you think? Watch and learn. While you got a second, why don't you go ahead and click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell if you want to be notified when stuff comes out. I welcome any questions or comments you may have down below. Okay, first things first. Any of the equipment that you see used in my videos is available on the website. If it's not there, send me an inquiry off the website, toolhutusa.com. That's T-O-O-L-H-U-T-U-S-A.com. My name is Sam. Okay, so what we got here today is we have a 2010 Infinity G37. The shop has found a service bulletin for an update on the ECM. So I have my battery maintainer hooked up to it. Very important with Nissans. You definitely want to make sure you have a good quality battery maintainer. Second thing, I'm using the Kardec Plus 3 as my interface, as you'll see. And I'm using the Right to Repair or the Consult 3 Plus R2R software. I'm not going to go through the process of downloading that software. It's right on Infinity's Nissan's website. So, watch and learn. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this Consult 3 Plus R2R started. At the same time, we're going to open up a browser behind us. And we're going to go to nissan-techinfo.com. We need to check this calibration and see if it really needs one uh, before we get too involved here. So we're going to go to the where it says NERS J2534 programming. We're just going to click on the reprogramming tab. One of the things with the R2R software is it looks for the genuine tool first and then uh, you can't stop it. We're going to go to the engine tab. And once it connects here. We're going to go to the ECU identification tab, and that's our part number we want to look up, the 23710. That is, best I can figure, that's a category number or a system number for Nissan. We can type in the number that's in there. Of course, I fat-fingered it, so get to do it again. And then you can see the updated calibration on the screen. And we're going to go ahead and purchase that calibration. This is where you give them money. And if you've given them money, they put it on the download page of your, uh, of your account. And then you go download it from there. Now there's directions on where to put it based on whether it's NERS or R2R software. Uh, this, is, this is the R2R software. So I save them in a Nissan folder because you can reuse them. So there's no sense in throwing them away. You just paid $30 for it. You might as well get some use out of it. <coughs> and then you got to unzip it to open it and then you want to copy uh, at least those two folders the dot dat and the uh, CSV file and just paste them into the C repro programming folder it's the weirdest name of a folder but anyway you can have multiple ones in there it doesn't seem to bother anything I try to keep them to a minimum. Uh, a lot of times I'll take them down to two or three at a time. So I'm going to give you the basic set of directions. We did choose the 
programming button on the front screen right at the on the home screen for the identification and it says right here it's infinity g37 sedan 2010 model year that is a correct VIN. you obviously don't want to program it with the wrong information so you want to do a little bit of work on it here now, i have programmed quite a few nissans with nurs and a couple years ago i switched to r and r or r2r and it seems to r2r seems to be a lot more intuitive but it does have its glitches as well so it's not perfect it's not super fast but nothing about nissan's or a lot of these OEs seem to be very fast. Once it's ID'd the car and stuff, we're going to choose the engine tab because that's the module we're updating. And it will see, based on the calibration number of the engine, it will see the vial that you put in it. It'll know which one to put in this car. So we just hit the save button here. I got two pages of disclaimers you got to get through. I'm just going to hit the next button. Here's our same page again. Tells us the approximate time to do this is 10 minutes. Uh, it seems to be fairly accurate, much unlike the some of the European stuff where it tells you 10 minutes and it takes two hours. So it seems pretty accurate. And what it's looking for here is your battery voltage. So we're just going to hit next. Now we're looking for all of these to be green. The heater fan switches on. It needs to turn off. This is the screen that I wish that they would put in NERS. Because all that will happen in NERS is it will fail and you've got to figure out why. Now you do need to log in here. Username and password. Make sure you got a genuine account. As soon as you come back here, it has already started transferring the information. So understand that once you, once that screen pops up for your username and password, you are committed. You are programming this car. So if you don't have a valid subscription, I'm not real sure what would happen because it uh, essentially starts programming it before you come back here. It doesn't really start programming the car, but it starts transferring data and it puts the ECM in programming mode. I have sped up this part of the process quite a bit. I haven't cut anything out, but I have sped it way up for you. So you don't have to sit here and watch the green bar go across for 10 minutes. And once it programs it, once it's done, it's going to verify your part number and stuff again so it has to call it back up again so the first thing it wants you to do is it wants you to do idle volume learn and I'm not real sure why but every one of these I've ever tried to do with R2R software uh, it fails so you always have to go in and do the idle volume learn afterwards but like I say it's uh, probably just a glitch with the R2R software. I think it's got because it can't see the position of the key with your J2534 device, but I could be mistaken. But every one I've ever done, it fails the, when you get the error. And I know it's not warm enough, but you get the error, and then it won't let you try again. So, Just want you to make sure the car starts and runs and idles here. It does idle, and it's not abnormally high. So it wants to key off and back on again here a couple of times uh, just to finish the programming of the ECM. We are going to go do and go through and do the idle volume learn. 
manually. We're, we're still going to use the R2R software, just not going to use this uh, programming finalization or whatever you want to call it. The automatic procedure. just erasing codes now. And here's your part number before and after programming. This is what we call a money page. This proves you did your job. So you want to print this. I'll give it to your customer. Give it to whatever. You want to print this. This is the page I print. If you haven't got that yet. <laughs> Sometimes I just take a picture of it with my, with my phone. It will not bring that screen back up, by the way. So now we're just going to go back to the engine. Kind of the same place we went to get the identification number, except we're going to go to the work support tab this time. Now I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure this thing is getting warm. It has been running here for a while. So it shows it at 149 degrees. That should be hot enough to do the 153 degrees. Should be hot enough to do the idle volume learn now. Of course, the requirement gives you you're in Celsius. So just gonna hit the next button here. It'll bring up at 70 degrees centigrade or Celsius. We're just gonna hit the start button and see what happens here and it will execute it you'll feel the engine idle down quite a bit and then we'll get a complete message here on the dash so it must have been warm enough to do it hope that helps somebody uh, do some programming thanks for watching thumbs up thumbs down questions or comments down below have a great day.